Okay, so we are going to continue our look into the quantum mechanical model. So we're just going to review a few concepts before we get into, um, we continue on into the next topic. So um, remember that there are two main things that have now changed about the atom. So the key concept is now we, we no longer have basically certainty where an electron is going to be found, right? So instead of planets orbiting around the sun, we now have bees that are traveling around the beehive. So the electrons are not really fixed in a certain pathway around the nucleus. However, they more so um, move around in a specific space, or I should even say um, around that space most of the time, because remember that there is an uncertainty to the location and speed of an electron. So we have that uncertainty, what we mentioned just now. And of course, electrons no longer behave the same way that we would be we would consider uh, particles of matter to behave, but they actually move around uh, in terms of how energy moves around in wave-like patterns. So we say an electron really is like a wave-like particle. Uh, so it has a frequency, it has a wavelength, uh, and that is determined based on the energy of that particular electron. So um, obviously there have been changes to Bohr's model. We no longer have the term orbit. We now have the term orbital, which is where we have a region of space where we have a high probability of locating an electron. So basically it's an area around the nucleus where we are most likely to find that electron uh, moving around. So, uh, we've, of course, we've already mentioned what is an orbital again. So an orbital is a region of space or a volume of space where an electron, uh, it should actually say most likely to be found. But, you know, chances are we would find the electron there, but it's not locked in. It's not, um, it's not in a finite amount of space. It can move both in and out of that region. So one thing we have not mentioned yet in terms of how many electrons can fit in an orbital. So here's a new idea for us. So every orbital that we're going to be discussing here can hold a maximum of two electrons. So of course, you're probably thinking, well, what if I have a, an atom that has like 25 electrons? Of course, you're going to have to have more than one orbital, right? So every orbital can hold a max of two. So we will obviously continue in our next lesson late after today, um, looking at those orbitals and how they're organized. But today we're actually going to be focused on something called quantum numbers. Okay, so an orbital is defined by four different quantum numbers. Okay, so I want you to think of quantum numbers almost like coordinates. So if you're looking at a GPS and you're looking at the coordinates of a specific location, there are two numbers uh, associated with it, right? So longitude and latitude. So just like you have those numbers defining that area of space in the world, quantum numbers do exactly that for orbitals. Think of them as a little mini coordinate map for us to know where the orbital is, how the orbital um, looks, like the shape of it, and in terms of um, what types of electrons are within that orbital. Okay, so there are four different quantum numbers, but you're probably thinking, well, this is a bunch of letters. They're not numbers, right? So these are letter representations for the numbers that we're going to be discussing. Okay, there are four of them. We're going to learn each of them individually, and then we'll talk about, well, what happens when you have a set of quantum numbers. So we have quantum number L, that's oh, right, pardon me, N, L, M, L, and M, S. So this L and S here are little subscripts. And the L is a cursive L. So principal, the first principal quantum number, the second, the third, and the fourth. The order of this matters. So when we say a set of quantum numbers, it is always the four values in this exact order. This is not going to make a whole lot of sense to you right now. Of course, we need to learn what each one of these is and what information does that tell us. So each number that's here. So, for example, if I say the number one for our first number, this is going to give us a piece of information about our orbital. 
every one of these numbers that we're going to learn about gives us a different piece of information. Okay, so we're going to start off with our first quantum number, also referred to as the principal quantum number. And the symbol to represent that quantum number is the lowercase n, which is what we have right here. So the letter n, the number that we assign that letter, tells us the energy level that that orbital is found in or where the electron is found. So for example, we have energy level number one is the first energy level, energy level number two, and energy level number three. So here, this picture is a Bohr-Rutherford, I guess, representation of an atom. So of course, we know we're not talking about Bohr-Rutherford, but I feel like this is just um, a nice, easy way to help you kind of visualize what we mean when we say energy levels. So the first um, energy level is always closest to the nucleus. As we go further and further away, the energy level gets higher and higher. Now remember, the electron that is in those energy levels also gets higher and higher in terms of energy as well. So when we say energy level number two, n is equal to two, uh, we're talking about electrons that are found in that second level, okay? Now, the other thing to keep in mind is the size of the orbital actually will also change. And actually, again, the, the circles here, the or original orbits, is just a nice visualization of this. So you can see here, energy level number one, if you were to compare it to the size of energy level number two, right, energy level number two is larger. You also have to think that energy levels are getting further and further away from the nucleus. So, of course, it's occupying a larger amount of space the further out that it goes. Okay, so this is just a nice way of visualizing it so that it's still correct in terms of um, thinking of it with energy levels in terms of this uh, in this manner. Okay, so for example, an electron in the lowest or first energy level would have the principal quantum number of one. The second energy level would have more energy and is found in n is equal to two, right? So n is equal to three would have even more energy than one or two, right? Uh, another important thing to keep in mind is energy levels can only be whole number integers. So we can't have energy level number, uh, you know, 3.75, okay, that doesn't exist. So they're whole numbers. And of course, there's no energy level number zero. So it starts at one and it goes up in whole number increments. Okay, so hopefully that first energy level is kind of straightforward, or first quantum number. So the first quantum number, right, N is the energy level. So the secondary quantum number, or also known as the angular momentum quantum number, the symbol here, is, this should be cursive, it's right here. The symbol for this is cursive letter L. So if we were to go back to that original one, we're talking about the second number right here. Okay, so let's talk about what pieces of information that gives us. So um, first of all, where this gets its name, angular momentum, is because when electrons are actually moving around the nucleus in waves, in its wavelength pattern, uh, the faster the electron is moving, the shorter the wavelength, right? And that's because the energy is higher. Well, what happens there is the orbital will actually change shape depending on the movement patterns that the electron will take on. Again, the movement patterns will depend on the amount of energy that electron has. So uh, basically, that's a fancy way of saying, well, what does L tell us? It tells us the shape of the orbital, okay? So the shape of the orbital is sometimes referred to as also the subshell for that energy level, okay? So what I mean by that? So we can have an energy level number two, let's say, but you might have more than one type of orbital in that energy level. It's not always just one type. So this, <coughs> pardon me, this second quantum number really tells us how many different types of orbital shapes do we have in that particular energy level. So it describes the additional electron energy sublevels or subshells that can be part of that main energy level. 
So this may not make a whole lot of sense right now. So let me, let's break this down even before we get to that. So energy level number one, okay, actually has no splitting of subshells. So this has only one type of orbital that exists in it. So that is actually L is equal to zero. Okay, so let's explain how do we get L if we know the N number. Essentially what you do is you take your N number and you minus one. So one minus one, of course, is zero. Okay, now what if we had energy level number two? So now our L values can actually be multi, uh, different types. So let's do N minus one. So two minus one is one. However, what you would also include is all of the subshells that were in the energy level beforehand. So not only will L equal one, but all will, L will also equal zero. So this means here we have only one um, subshell or one shape type or subshell, however you want to think of it. Whereas now in the second energy level, we now will have two subshells or shape types. And we'll talk about what the shapes they are in a second. Okay. So let's look at energy level number three. We're going to do N minus one, which is two, but we also include the sub levels that were in the one beforehand. So that means we're also going to have L is equal to one and L is equal to zero. So now we have a total of three different shape types for energy level number three. So the highest it goes actually, it, like how many exist is four shape types. So N is equal to four, right? If we do N minus one, we have three, but then we'll also have two, we'll also have one, and we'll also have zero. So there are four different sublevels or shape types when we have the fourth energy level. Now, this is the maximum number that exists for an atom that we know of right now. So that means even if you were to do N is equal to five, the maximum you can have are really these ones right here. So it would actually be exactly identical to the fourth energy level. Here you would have L is equal to three, two, one, and zero. And same thing with the sixth energy level and further out. So the, really the difference becomes between one, two, three, four, and everything after four is identical. Okay, so let's look at this again. So L can be N minus one, okay? But it essentially will have to lead all the way back down to zero. Or in other words, you do N minus one, and you also include all of the L values that were from the level beforehand, okay? Which is what we talked about over here. So here's N minus one, and then you continue subtracting until you essentially hit zero. Or you can think of whatever it was in the level beforehand plus the N minus one. So now let's talk about what these shapes are. What does, when we say L is equal to zero, what does that mean? When L is equal to one, what that means? So remember that the number we are assigning has meaning. Just like when we say N is equal to four, we mean the fourth energy level. Each of these numbers have a meaning. So they are designated shapes. So there are four different shapes to orbitals. Just like we mentioned, there are only a maximum of four different shape types here. So zero is a shape, one, two, and three. So here are the shapes. We have S orbitals, P orbitals, D orbitals, and F orbitals. So S shaped orbitals is when we give the designated code of zero to L. P is when L is equal to one, D is when L is equal to two, and F is when L is equal, L is equal to three. So we're gonna look at these shapes in the next part.